Good morning again. And just a quick note about my meditation this morning. In a little while, you'll hear me repeat the phrase, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And when you hear me say those words, I invite you to join in with me as you feel comfortable. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh, ever-present and ever-near God, come to us now. Speak to us through your word and through the words that you place on each of our hearts. And, O oh, dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this day please you and be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, here we are on the sixth Sunday in Lent, also known, of course, as Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. And looking back over these past six weeks, it certainly has been a remarkable journey that we have been on together throughout this Lenten season so far. As a congregation, we have been in a deliberate conversation about the meaning of forgiveness, the need for forgiveness within our own lives, the need for forgiveness within our congregation, and the need for forgiveness in the world around us. And throughout this Lenten season, we have been inspired and challenged by the preaching of several of our first church clergy. During the Ash Wednesday service, you may recall Reverend Tim introduced this Lenten theme of forgiveness in his heartfelt message. And then you may remember that the Reverend Amanda Conley reminded us that confession and introspection ultimately leads to forgiveness. The following week, Reverend Tim stressed that forgiveness necessitates a letting go, a letting go of the grudges and the hurts that we tend to hold on to. You'll also recall that the Reverend John Ashbery challenged us to think in much broader terms and to consider the need for debt forgiveness throughout our society. And then, Reverend Sarah Reed inspired us to truly see and accept the woundedness in one another, that we would then be better able to understand and forgive each other. And last Sunday, through stories from his ministry, Reverend Larry Miller emphasized that it is the indwelling of God that prompts us to seek and offer forgiveness to one another as Christians. And so, these past five plus weeks of reflection and self-examination have finally led us to this time, to this Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday worship service. And so we give thanks. We give thanks for this intentional journey that we have been on together in order to understand our need for forgiveness within our lives. Now, the mood of this Palm Sunday service so far has been upbeat and even joyful as we have been waving our palms and lifting our shouts of praise by singing the beloved hymns, all glory, laud, and honor, and lift up your hearts, ye mighty gates. And in our first reading from Matthew, from chapter 21 this morning, we are reminded of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, while the crowds were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, they called out. 
Hosanna. Hosanna? Have you ever wondered what that word Hosanna even means? Was it used only as a joyful expression or as a word of praise? Or was it something else? Biblical scholars today seem to agree that the word Hosanna is derived from the biblical Greek word Hosanna, which many believe is the transliteration of two Hebrew words, Yasha, which means to save or deliver, and Anna, which means please, I beseech. Save and deliver, please, I beseech. So with that in mind then, it may be that the largely peasant crowds that lined the road that day in Jerusalem were actually crying out to Jesus, saying, help us, we beg you. Please deliver us and save us. Help us. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Now, you may remember a groundbreaking book about Holy Week that was published about 15 years ago. It was written by biblical scholars John Dominic Crossan and the late Marcus Bork. It was titled, The Last Week, What the Gospels Really Teach Us About Jesus' Final Days in Jerusalem. In this book, Crossan and Borg make the case that there was a domination system in place in Jerusalem during Jesus' time, which was characterized by political oppression and economic exploitation of the most vulnerable among them. <coughs> Borg and Crossan also emphasize in this book that Jesus was indeed sharply critical of the religious leaders of the day, given their close relationships and collaboration with the corrupt rulers in power at that time. And so, keeping all of that in mind, what was the response of the people who were being oppressed as Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem that day? They cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> and what about today? What about today? What is our response to the active and felt presence of Jesus in our lives, even in the midst of so much pain and suffering and injustice in the world? For the senseless loss of life that is caused by gun violence and the all too frequent mass shootings, even as we mourn the recent loss of life of children and adults at the Covenant Christian School in Nashville this past week. We cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest for the lives lost and upended by recent tornadoes this past week in Tennessee and Arkansas and Mississippi and Alabama and Illinois and the growing concerns about climate change, we cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. For the transgender children and youth across our nation, who continue to be bullied and targeted by legislators for their own political gain, we cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. On this holy day of worship, on this Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, we are painfully reminded once again of all the suffering and brokenness in the world as we remember the suffering and the brokenness of Jesus' body on the cross. And so, for now, 
we weep and we pray and we wait on God to act through us together as the body of Christ. Amen.